Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Nerd Herders. My name is Nick. I'm Rich. And today is a special discussion. Yeah. We're based out of Orlando. We are based out of Orlando. And Orlando just had a, a film type thing happen. I they believe. did. Pretty big. What is it called? It's the, the Florida Film Festival. It takes place over between the Enzion Theater in Maitland and the Regal in Winter Park. Um, it's Oscar accredited festival, so the films that win there are eligible to win Oscars. Kind of a big deal. It's it's. I don't have all the lists. If it's number one in this, it's on the IndieWire's list of festivals and this list of festivals. I don't have all the information, but it's it's a it's a good little festival. It's a lot of fun. It's ten days. Um, so I was there for all ten days. Now, did you didn't come to any of them? Did you? No, not this year. No. Um, so some of the stuff that I would have wanted to go to was over the weekend, and I was busy over the weekend. Oh, you know, you're running and healthy shit. So come hang out with me. I wasn't stuff. there, so let me live vicariously okay. through you. How was it? It was awesome. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go. So this this is this was gonna be part of our what we're we were up to discussion today this week. Um, I didn't know how long it was going to take, so we thought this could be our, our weekly our discussion for the week. We can talk about it, talk about some of the stuff that we saw, some of the big stuff coming, because mm -hmm. um, I'm sure some of these movies you are going to be interested in knowing about it as well. Um, so opening night, we had the lobster. Have you heard of you know of the lobster? I know of the lobster. Um, have you seen his other films? Uh, Dogtooth and Alps. No. I'm going to lend you Dogtooth. Now you should make Daniel watch Dogtooth. My guess is no. You should make Daniel watch Dogtooth. <laughs> um, this I was probably one of my favorites of the festival. Um, if you Opening night, all downhill from there. No, I mean there's a lot of great stuff. Oh. But this is also this is the ones. Ten, when I go to the festival, a lot of the competition stuff and even some of the spotlight stuff, I tend to not look up and just kind of go in, see what they've got for me. This was one of the things I knew going in. I have been waiting for this movie since it was announced. I'm a big fan of, I can't remember the director's name, I can barely pronounce it when I do remember his name. Um, but I love his last two films, so I was definitely on the lookout for this one. Um, if you don't know, it's about a, it's kind of dystopian movie where these, this guy goes to this hotel, this rehabilitation center where you have X number of days to find a mate or partner and if you don't, and your time's up, you are turned into an animal of your choice. So his animal he chooses is a lobster. So that's why it's called lobster. But it's, it's really good. It's definitely on the slower side, but it's got a really interesting, dark sense of humor, um, similar to kind of his other films. I haven't seen them, so I can't really liken it too much. Um, so that was day one. Let's see what we got here. So there, before I get into this, is there anything that specifically that you want to know or me to talk about to dive into? Um, well, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm definitely I'm interested in your thoughts on High Rise. Okay. You know, you watched that. I did watch High Rise. You had never seen Badlands before. I know. did not see Badlands. Really? I didn't watch it. Oh. Okay. So, that's off the table. All right. Um, yeah, typically I take the week of the festival off. And this week, I, since I recently started a new job, I wasn't able to have that time to take off. So my time was limited to things I couldn't couldn't see. And taking three hours out of my day to go see that in a Q&A for something I can go rent wasn't quite what I wanted to do. Gotcha. Um, and it was, like, I got a, I got a pass for that. And it, the, the evenings with the Mark Duplass and Sissy Spacek for Badlands and Puffy Chair were separate tickets that I still had to pay extra for. So I didn't wasn't something that was high on my list of things to do. Gotcha. Um, but I can talk about High Rise. Okay. This is a weird fucking movie. Okay. Um, For those who don't know what High Rise is, it's a Ben Wheatley film uh, that stars Tom Hiddleston and a bunch of other... I have not seen a trailer for this okay. or anything. I just knew uh, that it was a movie that was... Sure. Out. Do you know anything about it? Do you, know, really. do you want to know anything about it? Mm. I don't know, not really. I've kind of stayed in the black. It's something okay. I tend to see. Uh, I know that every poster I see looks really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it is definitely one that 
I have needed some time to process. Like I came out of it and I was just like, I was like, oh, what'd you think? I'm like, I think I liked it. I need to process this thing. I really want to see it again. Like as soon as, I, I don't think it's getting released theatrically. I think it's going to be VOD mostly. I think it has something to do with Amazon or something. Something. It's some weird thing where the theaters don't want to do it because it's getting a VOD release first or. Yeah, I think it's on Amazon. Um, so like it was when I came out of I'm like, I need to see this again, I need to see it again when I'm not exhausted, because this was, I saw High Rise on day 9 of day t of 10 days, so I was typed up on caffeine and kind of tired and kind of out there, um, but I would absolutely recommend that you see this movie. I am very curious to hear what you think about it, and it was one that a lot of, it was very divisive. I don't want to get too much into it, because I don't want to ruin too much, okay. but... Alright. I didn't ruin, but I don't, if you want to go in blind, you're going kind of blind. Yeah. Alright, so what else did you see? What else stood out? What should the people know about? Um, some big ones that stood out. Let's stick with the spotlights because you'll probably have more access to that. Um, I saw Being Charlie Rob Reiner's new film. It's fine. It's, yeah. it's fine or what is it? Because, alright, Rob Reiner has made some gems. Yeah, some absolute. It is not a gem, is what I'm saying. And I feel like it's been a real long. Like, when was the last time do you think that Rob Reiner made a genuinely meaningful film? Because I don't know. Misery. Every time but he has a new movie misery. come out, I try and think back to. I mean, I think he made that movie where Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson were old people together. Bucket List. Did he make Bucket List? He made Bucket List. He made, like, Alex and Emma with, uh... Was it the one with the kids? What was the one with the kids? Yeah, he made the one with the kids, like, a couple of years ago. That wasn't that. Alex and Emma's, like, uh... Luke Wilson. He made Kate Bucket Hudson. List? Really? I'm nearly positive about really? that. Really? Yeah, him and Nicholson were like, all right, we did A Few Good Men. Let's go do Bucket List. Really? I feel like it. Could be wrong. Um... I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. But, yeah, it's this is not one of the highlights of his career. It's not bad. It's not a bad film. It's about this this teenager who's a, like got a drug problem and Kim going through rehab and trying to get his life together and stuff. It's a fine little movie. Um, it's kind of how I felt. He did the bucket list. Told you. I think actually the last good thing he did Rob Reiner did was he, his he, performance in Wolf of Wall Street. He did in So It Goes. No one knows. With what Michael Douglas is. and. Is it Diane Keaton in that one? Oh, yeah, that movie was supposed to be awful. Um, the Magic of Bell Island, of Bell Isle with, with Morgan Freeman, Bucket List. Rumor has it. Alex Rumor and Emma. Has it was atrocious. The Did Story you see of that? Us. The Graduate sequel? Mm -mm. <laughs> the American President in 1995 is probably the last, the last good thing. The American President is a great movie. Have you so, seen it? So, it's a long time oh, ago. God, I love that movie. Um, so, Flips was one of the kids. Rumor has it. Alex and Emma, the story of us. Um, oh my God! I am your child, and Ghost of Mississippi, and then he did the American President before that, and then it was North, A Few Good Men, Misery, When Harry Met Sally, Princess Bride, Stand by Me, <laughs> The Sure Thing, Sponsor. What the hell happened? So yeah, so 1995 is the last of of real meaning that Reiner has done. Um, this is fine. Uh, I saw High Rise, like I said, Hunt for the Wilder People, I did not get a chance to see, but that was the talk of the festival. Um, everybody seemed to love this movie. It's the new one from the guy who did What We Do in the Shadows. Mm. I can't remember. I can't remember type yeah, with uh, T or whatever. He's doing the new Thor movie. Yeah. Um, everyone seemed to absolutely love that. What is it called? Uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. Okay, right. right. Um, so people, that seemed to be a big one. Um, Lo and Behold played the new Werner Herzog doc, but I missed that. A um, couple of the ones that I saw, Morris from America is the new film from, I can't remember his name, but it's got Craig Robinson and this kid in it, and it's them moving to Germany. Um, and it's, he's like a 13-year-old kid who's trying to like adapt to, to German culture, kind of, and getting mixed in with these kids and stuff. It's really good. It's really funny. 
Um, Craig Robinson is really good. The kid is incredible. Um, I know that, I believe, should be get, it was a spotlight feature, so it should be getting a release at some point. Definitely check it out. Um, I saw Norman Lear, um, which is the doc about Norman Lear, who did All in the Family, Jefferson's um, Taxi. Yeah, uh, that great doc, <laughs> definitely worth checking out when it comes. It should be getting a release. That Rob Reiner was in that. That was a lot better than being Charlie. Um, I missed it, but Raiders, the story of the greatest movie ever made or whatever it's called was there. Oh. You've heard of that? Yeah. About the kids who yeah. pre-made Raiders. Um, so that played, that should be getting a release at some point as well. Um, missed it. I've seen the, the Raiders film. The, the oh, fan. Yeah. I have seen it. Um, but the, I missed the documentary, but another one everyone seemed to love. Um, Florida, Florida specific, I saw a film called Wrestling Alligators. That was really interesting. It was about the Seminole chief who started um, like the Hard Rock casinos and stuff. Um, I think that will probably get a release, me. Um, That's interesting. Good film. Uh, let's see. So you want to hear about... We go a couple different directions here. Well, here, okay. I have a question. For sure. You. Right. So one of the great reasons to go to a festival like this is, you know, to see some of the movies that we talked about early that eventually people will get to see. Yeah. But another great reason mm -hmm. to go to a festival like this is to see great movies that you probably never will get to see. Again. Yeah. So what were a couple of standouts of those that you think that was probably it? You're never going to find that again. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you one for sure. I saw a movie called In Search of the Ultra Sex. It was one of their midnight movies. Okay. Um, and it's from France, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's French. Um, so these, these two guys come through like 2,000... Um, pornographic films from the 70s and cut together an original movie. It's very much like a like What's Up Tiger Lily or Kung Pao, but with 70s porn. Uh, it's it's hilarious. It's a great time. It would be... Like, it's not something that I would be like, I'd sit down and watch, but like if I got a bunch of friends together and we got some beers and like that would be... It's like 70 or 60 minutes. It's real quick. Hmm. Um, that's something that I don't think is ever going to get a release ever because um, it will like I guess when they tracked it down and they got it it was through like a used bookstore or something like these guys had just done together and I think it, like, it's made its way through some of the festivals but it's not interesting something that I don't think is ever going to really get released um, some of the competition features which these may or I think some of them might have distribution some of them might not um, cheerleader is excellent um, it's, I think it's supposed to take place in the 70s, no, let me look that up, I want I just want to be sure, because I don't want to, I don't want to misrepresent any of these films, um, I'll pull up the Florida Film Festival site, mm -hmm. program, is there anything that you saw that was real rubbish, just trash? The only movie that I saw that I did not care for was the babushkas of Chernobyl, which I was definitely in the minority of people who did not like that. It was a doc about these old women who still live like in Chernobyl, like kind of in the danger area, but it's like 70 minutes of them hanging out and mushrooms and plants and it feels like it's about two hours long. It's 70 minutes and it feels like it's two hours long. Gotcha. Um, not one mutant, not one, not even one, not one Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish. Like you're gonna, you're gonna pitch me a film about these women living in radiation, and you're not gonna have somebody with like four Would arms. Would you rather have seen the Chernobyl Diaries? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I, <laughs> I think that speaks volumes. Um, I think it's actually won an award too at the festival. I was definitely in the minority on this. Most boring feature. But it was 2016. Um, features right up top. Truly, let me see if this is data. I feel like it was like the 70s. Oh, it's the 80s. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, it's like a coming of age story about this this cheerleader who um, starts is like 
between guys and trying to win back this guy that she likes and ends up like hanging out with this like kind of dorky nerdy kid um it's kind of like a fun a different take on like the oh she's gonna go date the nerd and stuff like that it's it's really good um let's see what else what are some other ones Donald cried um, it's really it's about this guy who goes back to his hometown to like clean up his grandma's house after she passes away um, and through some circumstances in the beginning of the film he doesn't have a cell phone like he lost at the bus stop his car just doesn't isn't working so he goes to like his old neighborhood friend to ask him for help and he's like this really kind of obnoxious guy he's like oh yeah we're gonna go hang out and yeah I'm gonna go we're gonna I'll take you to the the funeral home but first we gotta make the stop we gotta go see this guy he's gonna he's gonna love it if you go see him we gotta he's like no we're not gonna no no you got it we're gonna go see him and hilarity ensues and some drama and, um it's it's really good I think that won something I'm not sure um embers was a really cool kind of post-apocalyptic film um it's about this. It's post apocalyptic but like the disease that's spreading is like a memory loss disease. So like after you've gone to sleep, you forget everything, or kind of forget a certain period of time. It's not specifically detailed of like where your memory starts and stops. Um, so like it's these little vignettes that are happening throughout the city as this is going on. So like one of them's like a this, these two people wake up next to each other and they're like, what's what's going on? And they're like, I feel like I know you, but I don't really know you. Like, what's... Do you know what my name is? No, but you look like this. Mm. You know, and they're looking around and like, maybe we're, maybe we're, are we family? And then, no, our eyes aren't quite right. But so we might be, we might be a couple. Maybe we were a couple. Yes, I think that's what it was. So it's, it's that and like different people and stuff kind of around the city, what they're going through and how they're surviving this, interesting, this disease. Um, Slash is a really good one. Um, it's about this kind of like the fan fiction slash fiction culture um, and like this sort of like a coming of age story this kid who is gets really into writing slash fiction and ends up going to this convention for it's like slash fiction writers and things like that um, some good docs that I saw um, not the Bushkas of Chernobyl. Um, Act of Love was really good. Act of Love was, it's about a uh, Methodist? Yeah, Methodist min or ministers or priests? What are they? I think minister. The, the head of the Methodist congregation or whatever um, performed the marriage of his homosexual son and his partner. And we got out, and they he was put on trial for because I guess that's something the Methodist like the Methodists have from the from what the film was saying is you know it's okay that you're homosexual, but you are not you know it's a sin to act on those things, so they don't condone marriage, and it was a big thing in the Methodist Church, I guess that's happened. So it's kind of about the trial and sort of the how certain people in within the church are trying to change things, and certain people are trying to keep it the same, and it's good. Um, Best and Most Beautiful Things is excellent. It's about this a blind girl with um, functionally autistic, or so. So it's like a it's like it's like a high functional autism and Asperger's. She's like blind unless she has her like right up here, um, and it's kind of about her growing up, living her life, trying to figure out how she can live on her own and you know, the way kind of society looks at people with certain disabilities and um, things like that. It's it's excellent. Um, oh, what are some of the other big ones? So the last kind of big, big one that I, for docs, is called Hooligan Sparrow. And it's this girl went to film um, about, like, the sex trafficking trade, or the sex worker trade in China, and met this, this woman, Hooligan Sparrow, who was involved in that and trying to to work for the rights of sex workers in China and ends up getting caught up in this protest for the school where these the principal and like some official were caught in a hotel with like six underage six like 13 year old girls or something um, and there's this loophole in in their system where if it's 
rape, it's like life in prison or death. But if it's prostitution, then it's like five years in prison. And so there's like a protest going on, and she gets caught up in it. And it's like she's constantly like in fear of her life and her footage, and like the government is is constantly like over their shoulder and watching them. And she had to smuggle the footage out of the country to get it. And it's it's really intense. It's really crazy how she managed to do some of this stuff. Wow. Um, let's jump over to sh anything. I'm gonna jump over to shorts. Unless there's anything else you wanna. Uh, no, I have a couple questions when you're done. Okay. Um, are there any midnights? Oh, okay, one midnight one I do want to talk about. Another one, um, Belladonna of Sadness. Have you heard anything about that? It's a it's a Japanese animated film from the seventies in like watercolors. It's, it was supposed to be lost, and that they they found it. It's getting like a four K restoration and a Blu-ray, so that played. It's definitely like a seventies trippy kind of film. It's another one that I liked, but I would need some time to process it and I'd like to see it not at midnight and not on day nine where I'm exhausted but it's very good um, shorts program all really strong um, I'm just going to go through some highlights because there's a lot of shorts on here um, shorts one I don't know. There's some good stuff on here. There's one called The Color Party that has... I don't remember either of the actors' names, so I'm going to skip that. Um, How to Lose Weight in 40 Steps is, is cute. It's about this guy losing weight. Or it's, it starts off, you know, step one, step two, step three, and then it's this whole long thing about him breaking up with his girlfriend and trying to get over her. Um, shorts are going to be a little bit harder to talk about just because they're short. Right. Um... Let's see, I, I talked to you about Red Folder before we recorded. It's it's another solid one. I think that, if I recall that, won an award. Um, it's kind of about this system that some schools do. I don't know if all of them do it, um, where they'll make up sort of a wild goose chase to send a student on throughout the school to get rid of them for a certain period of time. Um, it's like, I don't want to deal with him for an hour, so oh, go, go down to so-and-so's classroom, they have my Red Folder, and then they'll show up there, and they'll be like, oh, well... I, I don't have it. It's so you try so and so's classroom, and, and they'll just kind of bounce around, trying to find this this red folder that's not actually a thing. Mm -hmm. And the filmmaker was there, and apparently that was a thing that some schools did or have done. Um, so if you're ever in, if you're in school, kids, and they ask you to go get a red folder, they don't like you. Maybe be better in class. Um, let's see, shorts for. Probably my favorite shorts program. The shorts for doesn't mean anything to you guys. Um, the shorts programs are are set up into certain sections, and the fourth one is probably my favorite. It's the most kind of out there, ridiculous. Um, Brett Gelman, do you know? Have you? He was in Love. Um, he's a comedian. He's like the bearded guy who runs. Uh, uh, Britta's like radio station or works. In, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that one's ex dinner with dinner with the family of Brett Gelman and Brett Gelman's family. If I if it's online, it was done by William Street, so I imagine it's going to be released or somehow you'll be able to see it. Maybe like on Adult Swim. Um, but like, there's one called Too Legit, which is like the way people think about rape. Like, it starts off with this actual news clip of some guy who's like. Yeah, well, the thing about rape is, you know, if, if it's really rape, the body has a way of just dispersing the the fetus and getting rid of it. And so it kind of, like, plays on that and just, like, that culture, and like, rape culture in general. Um, definitely polarizing. Excellent short. Um, I don't know. I feel like when I'm at the shorts, I'm just kind of, like, rambling on about these five-minute things that ultimately might spoil stuff if you see them. Right. So what are some of the questions that you have? Alright, so of all the films, what was your favorite? Uh, of all the films, I don't really have a specific Most favorite. stand out. When I say what was the, you can only tell me one movie. I don't so know. You have to. It's a question. The most fun I had in the movie okay. was probably okay. Ultra Sex. Okay. Um, some standouts. Lobster, Cheerleader, 
Um, best and most beautiful things. Um, those are probably my standout features for me. How about standout breakthrough performance? Ooh, um, when you think back on it, the most the performance. I, I'm Chris Anderson. I'm I'm mad that I'm I'm bad, mad I'm gonna butcher some of these names. Um, who was in Donald Cried? He directed, wrote, played Donald. Fantastic performance. Um, he's great. Let me make sure I get that right, or else I'm gonna be. Um. Yeah. Uh, Chris Chris Avidzian. Avidzian. Chris Avidzian. I'm sure I'm butchering that, but that's, um, he's, he's the one from Non-Crowd, he's excellent. The girl from Cheerleader, um, Catherine Blades, fantastic. Um, Erica, why am I forgetting her name? Um, Erica Faye from To Keep the Light, um, fantastic performance, she's another wrote, directed. Um, that one's about, it's the 19th century, she's like a lighthouse keeper, like one of the, the few... I guess the, the whole idea is there's not weren't many light women in light housekeepers. Um, and a lot of times they weren't actually recognized. They'd be taking over after their husbands or if their husbands couldn't do it or whatever. Um, so it's it's about her. You aren't sure what's wrong with her husband. And she's taking over the lighthouse and doing like all the duties and stuff for that. It's excellent. She's great in it. Um, stand up performances. The Kid from Morris from America. Uh, I think he's going to be one that, to watch out for. Um, those are kind of the big ones offhand that are jumping out at me. Cool. Um, whose names I can remember from right. some of these. So overall, okay. Uh, you would obviously recommend that people go. Yes. To this, or mm -hmm. if they're not based out of Orlando like we are or in this area, there's probably a film festival somewhere. Yeah, near you. check out check out your local film festival. Um, there's always great stuff that you may never get a chance to see again. Like some of these shorts, you know, I saw a total of 122 films um, and like 80 of them were short films. You're probably never going to get to see most of these short films again unless they show up online or you actively seek them out. Um, so that, those are programs that I, no matter what at these festivals, I always make sure that I go to. Because with the, some certain exceptions, I will never get to see these again. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, ten, ten days? Ten days. Um, tiring. Obviously. Exhausting. Yeah. Um, but you survived. I did. I did survive. I'm here to, 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 to tell all you guys about to it. die another day. Um, Next year you'll be right there again, all 10 days. Yep. I've been doing it for 10 days since 2009 or 2010. Wow. So I think I started going in 2009 as a ticket holder and then just kind of like, oh, like I, you know, I, I found out about NZ, I think in like late 2008, so in 2009. I was like, oh, I should go to this. And I, would, I got like a 10 ticket package or something. I was like, okay, cool. This is what I'm going to go to these ones. And then the next year, I was like, I want to see this. I want to see. Next thing I knew, I had like picked out so many movies to go see. I was like, I'm just going to buy the pack, buy, buy a pass for it. And so I, for the last six years, I've gotten a pass for it. Um, wow. Very cool. Um, and one of, the, one of the great things about this festival is I've, I've had a lot of friendships and stuff from filmmakers and people that I've met through this festival. It's a very relaxed festival. You know, if you've never been to Enzian around here, it's it's kind of like a dining theater. Um, so you get you there's food and stuff that gets served. There's also a bar that's right outside. So a lot of the times for the festivals, everyone just kind of hangs out there. It's a good hub for filmmakers, for patrons, for whoever to sort of be there and around. And you like, oh, you like this person's film? Well, they're right over there. Go go talk to them. Yeah. Go tell them what you thought. Or you didn't like their film? Go tell them what you thought. You may not get as good of a response from them if you walk up and say your film sucked. Um, but no, I mean, it's really cool and you can just, you know, there's been a lot of really good friendships and stuff that I've built out of this festival from meeting people that I may not get to see often, but like once a year, sometimes we'll get back in touch and like, hey, 
what are you working on now? You know, there's some filmmakers who've had their stuff consistently, and it's like cool every you know every other year, every year we get to see them and t hang out with them. Yeah, that's really cool. So that is the Florida Film Festival. Um, I would like in the future to get one of the programmers on the show, so stay tuned for that. I'm working on it. Um, it's a scheduling thing at this point, but so we can get some more insight into how they go through that process, how that process works. Absolutely. And any other questions? Not really. Okay. Um, if you guys go to FloridaFilmFestival.com, you can find out stuff about this past festival there. If you have questions for me or whatever, you can tweet at me about those questions. You can find me on Twitter at Rich Belson. And I'm on Twitter at Stonks. The channel's on Twitter at OABeer underscore official. And you can find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash OverBeer. We are on um, Instagram as well, over underscore A underscore Beer. You can email us too, overbeerofficial at gmail.com. And we're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't have a YouTube URL for you yet, do we? Did we get one yet? You check? Nope, he checked. He checked. Um, we do not, so we need more subscribers. So if you enjoy these videos, please like, share, and subscribe. But if you don't have any other questions, that'll wrap things up for today. Cool. So until next time, drink up. <laughs>